Welcome back to the National Defense. It's Randy Miller, and of course, it's uh, Suicide Prevention Month, and we can't say enough about that and the people that are helping to bring that to uh, at least some smaller numbers. And uh, Warrior's Heart, we've talked about them before on the program. I mean, they do such a great job with that. And one of the players in that is uh, Master Sergeant and best-selling author Justin Jordan. And uh, they, the way that they help heal 3,000, over 3,000 heroes, heal and prevent veteran suicide, joins us here on the National Defense. Justin, how are you? I'm well, Randy. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the time. I'm really fascinated at your story because uh, you had an MOS that I had never heard of since I've been doing this show. But, I mean, it's something that's absolutely vital to, uh, to do in a military, but it's just something that I've never heard of. Uh, talk about your time in the military. Absolutely. So I, um, I joined the air force in 1993, uh, you know, pretty quickly after high school, I, you know, tried some different jobs, but then I went into uh, the air force, the career field uh, I chose was called services. And it's kind of a, a jack of all trades, if you will, everything from being a cook to working in the hotels, uh, fitness centers, gyms, an MWR type thing, but there's right. a little bit of a, uh, a portion of it that was called mortuary affairs. <clears throat> and I did that uh, for a good portion of my career, six or seven out of the 20 years I, I, I served. Uh, and so, that entailed everything. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask you, what, uh, what did uh, the job uh, require? So our job was to be a liaison for the family. Right, so everything from viewing the remains post uh, autopsy to working with the funeral homes, um, you know, making sure the embalmings were done correctly, uh, you know, both stateside and deployed locations. Uh, in the six years that I did it, uh, I was stationed at Davis Mothin Air Force Base, and I, I saw just about everything I, uh, yeah. that you can imagine. Oh man, I, and, uh, I can't even imagine. I mean, it's and six years of that, right? Yes, uh, sustained six years. I did it on and off at different times in my career field, downrange, uh, different locations. Uh, but this, for the, the time I was at Davis Moth, and I was the unit deployment manager and mortuary non commission officer in charge. Man, so that, I, I that has to affect you. I, I mean, I can't imagine somebody doing that job and not being affected in a very deep way. And I'm, I'm sure that was the same with you, right? Oh, man, it broke me. Yeah. To be honest, it, you know, and. You go through all of these things. Why am I feeling this way? Why am I weak? Why am I, you know, all of these whys in your head and you don't understand that, you know, the human brain isn't meant to see that kind of repetitive stack trauma. It's Mm. not meant to see trauma at all. Right. So when you, when you account that, you know, it's kind of a normal reaction, a post-traumatic stress reaction uh, to seeing that much death. I would think so. That if you if you didn't feel something, that, that that's when you're in trouble. I would imagine. Absolutely, you know, and and what, that that's a good point, Randy. Right? One of my therapists, when I was going through uh, treatment, had said, "Man, I would worry about you if you weren't, yeah, having a post traumatic stress response, um, because then you just don't feel right." And yeah. and a lot of our, our our warriors that come back from you know seeing things that the brain just isn't equipped to handle. Uh, you know, we're told on every baseball dime in a football field, and, <clears throat> excuse me, in America, to suck it up. Right. Quit being a baby. Shake, it, shake it off. You know, and the, yeah. You know, put, rub some dirt on it, right? Right, right. And, and we want to be. We want to be that. You know, we're warriors. We're tough. We we we, we chose to protect and serve. Um, and now we're feeling these these symptoms of weakness, hypervigilance. Uh, insomnia goes with a major depressive disorder, mm. uh, and then which leads to the suicide epidemic that we see in our veteran and first rounder communities. Uh, yeah, and and I I know that you went through a, a fair amount of that yourself, right? I did. I mean, you know, I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you I know what gunmetal tastes like. Mm. You know, it's not something I'm very proud of, but at the same time, it's something that I was able to. Uh, work through and be able to come out on the other side and have some real post traumatic growth. Well, and you're, you're uh, one of. To, I was just going to say, uh, Justin, yeah. you, you're one of the very few people I think that can 
then translate that for another warrior that's going through the same thing because you've been there. Absolutely. And that's what's beautiful about Warrior's Heart where I currently work. Right? We're warriors healing warriors. You have to earn the right. If a, if a warrior is struggling, they're not just going to listen to anybody. Right. Just any Joe off the street. They ha- you have to have some learned, earned experience. And a lot of times they'll make jokes with me, ah, chair force, right? We, we go back and forth between the branches. But when they find out what I did, they're like, okay, this guy gets it. Yeah. He understands yeah. the struggles I'm going through. And you actually wrote a book about this called And Then I Cried, Stories of a Mortuary NCO. And uh, that has to be, I would think, uh, very therapeutic in itself. It is. Um, so how that came about, I, uh, I actually went to treatment um, at a place called in, in Salt Lake City. I was an active duty master sergeant. And when I was there, part of our uh, therapies, when we would come and share our stories and group with the other uh, teammates I was in there with. And, you know, it was, it was a struggle because... I would come in every day with a different story. And, you know, the, the men and women I was in there with, you know, they would they had one or two. I had hundreds, so I didn't know what to share. Right. But my therapist shared with me on the way out the door, she's like, your stories have impact on others. And I really think you should consider uh, writing them down because we did cognitive processing therapy, which was handwriting our stories. So I really thought about that on the way home and, and said, you know what, challenge accepted. And I, I, I hand wrote the book in 30 days after I got home. Oh, wow. Um, and I really wanted to make sure that it was a dignified product. It wasn't something that I was, you know, uh, hey, look at me. It's about the stories of the men and women. And, and I asked you to walk next to me and feel it. Because the, the more we share our stories, the less, I call it the ripped off Band-Aid theory. Every time mm. you tell it, it, it hurts a little less. Mm. Uh, and that's what we have here at Warrior's Heart. We we do a thing called a lifeline, and it's from first cognition all the way to current state. And you, you go through it with your peers, and it's kind of a crescendo moment in our treatment, right? It says, hey, and you have to give that story in front of your peers, and that's hard to do. Wow. You know, Tom Spooner, one of our founders, often says, you know, a gunfight, that's easy, but but sitting in front of my peers and, and sharing my deepest, darkest secrets, now, that's hard to do. Wow. We're talking to Justin Dorton here on the National Defense. And, uh, yeah, let's get into Warrior's Heart. Uh, how did you find them, and what do you do there? Absolutely. Well, thank you. Um, I found them seven years ago. I was, uh, you know, that stereotypical veteran uh, jumping from job to job to job after service. I was medically retired for post-traumatic stress after 20 years in service. My wife was active duty. She is medically retired just at 19 years. So we found ourselves, you know, probably about 20% of our income trying to figure out a VA system, Mm. trying to figure out all of these things and just struggling. Also, you know, some unresolved post-traumatic stress on both of our sides. Sure. Right. So I had uh, been, my daughter had decided to play softball at the local high school here in Bandera, Texas. And uh, I met one of our founders, Lisa Lannon was working the concession booth. And I just, we just started talking and had a good conversation. And uh, she invited me out to show me what Warrior's Heart was all about. It was new in the community, less than a year old at that time. And I just fell in love. And they said, hey, do you want to work with us? And I'm like, absolutely. And uh, since then, I've done everything here. As I was an admissions advocate, I, I became the admissions director for four or five years. Uh, now I've transitioned into the special operations director. And I, uh, I support all the teams at both of our locations with anything they may need, uh, special projects, uh, and help with. And I know you guys have a 42-day recovery program. Talk about that a little bit, and uh, why 42 days? So, thank you. And that's unique in the industry, actually. So, most programs, when you talk about, and I'm using air quotes here, rehabs, which is we're a training program. We offer rehabilitative services, but... We do it in a 42-day training program because we want you to become a sober, confident warrior. Mm -hmm. What we found is that 28-day model, which was kind of driven by insurance, is is not enough. And we consistently saw in the early days our warriors asking for extensions. And 42 days seems to be the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's studies out there by the hundreds that say, you know, the more time you spend in treatment, the better likely the outcomes are. So we decided to... um, you know, create a 42-day training program for our warriors to become sober, confident warriors. 
Yeah, it's really interesting. And at Warrior's Heart, I, I know that uh, that includes detox, inpatient recovery, sober living, aftercare on two 500, over 500 acre ranches that uh, you, they describe as, you know, feels like the opposite of a hospital. I can imagine that. And, you know, uh, I, and I don't know, uh, Justin, how many times you've been in the hospital or, or been a part of a hospital care situation, but that seems to me to be the opposite of taking care of someone because I've, I've seen people in hospital stays that last so long that it becomes kind of a toxic situation. What you guys do is, is really the opposite of that. Absolutely. We, one thing our founders did really well was make sure that we weren't in a hospital sterile environment. Uh, We need our warriors to, you know, have an environment of care that's, you know, respectful of their service. They deserve it. They deserve to have five-star accommodations. They deserve to have queen size beds. They deserve to have the very best therapists that you can get. And and that's because they've given so much. So that's what we really strive hard to do is create an environment that really speaks to that. And when they get here, it falls off of them so much quicker because I can remember when I went in the hospital, the first thing I did was wait two hours in a hospital waiting room to see anyone. Right. We don't do that. Uh, we say welcome home the second you get here, and our staff immediately takes you in. We start doing the necessary paperwork. Our nurses meet with you. And then if you need detox, you go into that uh, level of care. And another thing that's different, too, is if you do require some type of detox services, that doesn't count towards your 42 days of treatment. That's an, uh, an addition. Mm-hmm. So you're not going to be seven days, five days in a detox, and that cuts into your treatment. No, you still get the full 42 days. And then you guys, it's it's not done. Then you you offer follow up, and uh, and keep checking in with these folks, right? Absolutely. When they get here, they get a mission in my life, and that works through their aftercare. Uh, we also have a sober living facility here in Texas, which offers intensive outpatient programming, and we also do transmagnetic stimulation or TMS. We do a brand called Mert, which is a targeted form of brain stimulation that mm. helps with TBIs, post traumatic stress, you name it. So uh, we, we run the full gamut, all the, uh, all the different uh, modalities of care for this uh, addiction as well as substance abuse and post-traumatic stress disorder as well as other co-occurring psychological disorders. Man, that is incredible. That's so cool. We're talking to Justin Jordan here on the National Defense and Warrior's Heart, and they get to have some fun too. I mean, uh, it's electives like uh, fishing and hiking, canine therapy, equine, Listen, I'm I'm going to talk to you about equine a little bit because I live on a horse ranch and I'm married to a horse trainer, and nice. <laughs> there is no better therapy than I mean, you know what's that old saying? Is you know, the back of the horse is good for the inside of a of a man, and that That's is right. absolutely true, man. I mean, we've even had um, uh, we've played horse soccer with veterans, and it's just <laughs> you, you know when you're working with a horse or, or you're around a horse, you better be attentive. <laughs> or you That's right. be on the ground. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have a, a great a relationship here. So Bandera, I don't know if you know, is the cowboy capital of the world. So what better place right. to get uh, the very best equines in the world, right? So we have a great relationship with a local uh, gentleman named Mario who runs our equine program. And the Warriors get to learn husbandry. They get to ride some horses at our Texas location. And, their, and our Virginia location is rather, it's a newer facility, about a year old, almost to the day, Not 11 we opened last year. So we're still working on starting that one up, but uh, we should see that uh, coming online very soon. Uh, That's cool. In our Virginia location. I just participated in an event uh, last month in um, in Austin, just a, about an hour outside of Austin, and it was uh, sponsored by Ford, is one one of our sponsors, and they did uh, a Bronco off rodeo, and it was all for veterans. I was, uh, it, yeah, it was great. It was great, and they they put you in these Broncos. And, and you go on this expedition that is, you know, over rocks and, and things you shouldn't be able to climb in a, in a Bronco. And I, I get in mine, and I've got two Purple Heart recipients in the back, and I'm driving. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> I, I, I got to be responsible for two Purple Heart recipients? But it was. Oh, believe me, they've seen much worse driving than you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
We had a blast. We just had a blast. Yeah. And, you know, that's the kind of stuff I think you're talking about, you know, that number one, that uh, that camaraderie, uh, that feeling of, of doing something and, and, you know, being a part of a mission. That's just that's just I mean, to me, that's just common sense, right? It is. So one of the things that really sticks out to me when you talk about those kind of things, we owe it to our warriors to live our very best. Life, Absolutely. Right. We owe it to them because the ones that we have lost, if they were sitting next to us, they wouldn't want us sitting in it, in it for a moment. They'd want us to go out there and, and excuse my language, kick ass every day. And that's what we try to, uh, you know, show with our words through our own actions, right? Go out there and live it every single day. And I tell you, I've had most post-traumatic stress since I've started living my life that way mm. uh, than I've ever had in any therapy room. Uh, it's just because, like I said, we owe it to those to live our very best lives. And it's a blessing to be able to do this work. How's your wife doing? She's great. She uh, she loves animals. So she now works at a veterinary clinic. She is a receptionist there and does some teching on the side. And uh, I now have five dogs because of that. <laughs> <laughs> five <laughs> dogs. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. I tell you, we uh, uh, got to love it. It's frustrating at times, but I'm a bald guy, so I can't pull any of my hair out anymore. But uh, <laughs> If it makes mama happy, it makes me happy. That's right. That's, that's, that's exactly right. Hey, listen, man, I, I always tell people, you know, if you if you have a problem getting out of the house, you have a problem uh, uh, exercising, you have a problem, you know, being a part of something, get a dog. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's because right. first thing in the morning, you're, you're out. That's right. <laughs> They'll get you up. They won't let you slack, right? For That's sure. right. And so, when you have five of them, it's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> so, Justin, uh, people that are uh, listening to this, uh, if they are in that deep hole of, uh, of depression and thinking about suicide, <sighs> yeah, I mean, what do, you, what do you tell? What do you say? I, I, I say give us a call, yeah. right? You know, uh, go to our website. There's the, the numbers right there. Uh, they can reach www.warriorsheart.com and they can reach out to us 24 seven. We, we have advocates standing by and that's not just for veterans too. That's for law enforcement officers. Sure. Cause that's for dispatchers. That's for, you know, men and women in, in any type of, of service. That's the warrior class, right? If you served your country or your community, uh, then we want you to call when you, when you need that help. Let's see if we can figure out a plan for you, uh, you know, to get that help. And it's not only just, you know, if you're not, if, even if you're not struggling with addiction, we're going to find a place that is going to work for you. Right. We, we have several relationships built with other facilities that may treat that specifically for us. We do need to have some type of substance abuse or uh, addiction involved in, in the, in the diagnosis sure. because that's our primary, but we do treat the co-occurring simultaneously. But if it's just, you know, other things. And we have a team of our missions advocates that are, you know, made up of law enforcement officers, veterans, spouses, you name it. So they, they, they earn the right and they get it. So just looking for someone to talk, give us a ring, go to that website and our number's right there on the very top. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and mention that number. It's 866-955-4035. 866-955-4035. If you want to write that down right now, this is yes, such a this is just such a great organization, Warrior's Heart. Man, uh, Justin, thank you so much for for your story, and thank you for your service. Thank you for the time today and everything that you're doing every day for veterans. Well, thank you. The pleasure is all mine. It's always good to share the story of Warrior's Heart. Next time I'm in Texas, I'm going to come and uh, look you up. You're always welcome. Come tour. Thank you, man. Have a great day. You too. We'll be right back here in the National Defense. 